And aloha, folks, and welcome to this edition of Five Questions. Yet again, an opportunity to chat with folks in our community, making a difference and making an impact every day. Five Questions is heard on khvhradio.com, also on hawaiireporter.com, and right here on the Rick Amata program. It's a delight to have Five Questions with Jane Sawyer. She is the director of the Hawaii District Office of the Small Business Administration. Jane, aloha. Thanks for being with us. Aloha, Rick. It's great to have a chance to talk to you. Well, tell you what, we're going to jump right on in, if you don't mind. We do have five questions for you. Okay. And I think it's appropriate we start with the first question, and that would be, uh, what is the mission of the Small Business Administration, and can you describe the small business community here in Hawaii for us? Okay. Well, the mission of the SBA is really clear and very, very simple, where our programs help small businesses start grow, and hopefully succeed and prosper. That's the entire goal. We have a number of different programs. Of course, we're an independent federal agency, so that means that um, our programs are available and accessible to U.S. citizens um, who run or operate or want to start a small business. Our programs have three major focuses, and that's uh, capital, consulting, and contracting. So we call it the three C's. So we have programs to help small businesses uh, get access to capital, anywhere from 5,000 to 5 million, depending on what their needs are. Um, We help small businesses get their fair share of that $500 billion that the federal government spends. The target is 23% of all that spending is purchased through small businesses. Uh, It's a, it's a big challenge. That's a lot of money. Um, and then we provide consulting, uh, counseling, and training services because that's one of the main areas where small businesses still need assistance at any stage in their business life cycle um, to manage their businesses better, mm-hmm. be more productive, create jobs, things along that line. And and describe our small business community here in Hawaii for us, would you please? I know. Well, we've all heard the saying, small business is big business, and I think uh, that's more true here in Hawaii than probably anywhere in the country. Um, probably 99.7% of all businesses in Hawaii are actually small businesses based on um, what we call the NAICS codes, the North American Industrial Classification System, that determines, you know, what really constitutes a small business. It's a system that's based on annual revenues or number of employees throughout all different types of industries. So a lot of small businesses in Hawaii, um, you know, the the general rule of thumb that some people use, say, you know, okay, do you have 50 employees or less, 100 employees or less? Um, some, some types of industries, some types of businesses can have up to 500 employees, mm-hmm. and they're still a small business. Excellent. Thanks for that very much, Jane. Uh, Question number two, what is your assessment of our economy, and especially as it pertains to small business in Hawaii? Well, um, you know, I think that we've been fortunate in Hawaii, though we've, you know, been struggling over the last several years, like everywhere else, um, with uh, issues like, you know, lending and um, jobs. We haven't been hit as hard as some other places on the mainland. Um, It's still going to be a struggle for a while, but we are seeing improvements. Um, We're seeing our loan volume across the country go up, uh, back to some of the the, um, pre-recession levels, but uh, we're still seeing lending being tight. Um, We are seeing people... um, go back to expanding their businesses, or after some real careful repositioning, looking at, you know, okay, how can I be more productive? Okay, maybe it's time to reposition and grow a little bit. So here in Hawaii, we're, um, we have over 200 loans and over $50 million out there so far this fiscal year. Mm. We're seeing good trends in government contracting, the number of contracts we're getting to small businesses. So that's been very, very helpful. Um, even in the last year across the country, we just saw the, the national scorecard for government contracting, and the target is 23%. Um, last year, we saw 22.7% of government contracting dollars going to small businesses. So I think it, where we're really trying to push is to help businesses really um, look at and analyze the situation they're in, look they can improve their operations, look at 
you know, doing better financial management, uh, looking at increasing productivity, looking at where their opportunities are going forward. Um, so that's a, that is a really important thing for them to evaluate because we aren't going to go back to kind of business as usual where um, financing was easier um, or, you know, you could be more flexible. Mm-hmm. You, you know, the trends that you were seeing in the past are continuing. So we need to do business wisely, smart. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I know that the uh, state legislature is um, tremendously influential, obviously, on what happens in our community along with uh, other branches and forms of government. So let me start with question number three. And legislatively speaking, Jane, what laws were enacted this past session that were either pro or con for small business? Which maybe one or two stand out the most for you? Oh, wow. You're asking me a tough question. Um and probably need to sit down and and uh, look at this because I don't work a lot with um, the local legislature, mm-hmm. so that one's a, a one that would be far too, far too much opinion for me right now. I should Understand. have looked up uh, to look back at the state legislature. I'm sorry, Rick. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Maybe we can transition to perhaps even congressionally speaking, because obviously our federal government plays a role in our lives as well. Is there anything at the federal level that has caught your attention uh, recently? Well, you know, we've been doing a lot of work um, on recovery and really looking at how we can, you know, eliminate some of the uh, burden of reporting and uh, government legislation on small businesses because it does some of the the actions that our congressionals take, whether it's, you know, efforts to protect the environment or to protect employees, um, uh, can often be an extra burden and additionally, Add additional cost to small businesses because they just don't have the economies of scale that mm-hmm. larger businesses would have. Um, we've seen some things come out through, say, the Small Business Jobs Act that are really going to influence um, small business contracting. Um, there have been some regulations that have come out to, um, say, give parity to uh, different types of businesses in government contracting so that uh, different the hub zone certification, the um, service disabled veteran, the 8A government contracting uh, is uh, looked at equally by contracting officers. Um, there are some new rules that are coming out to uh, limit what the government can do in bundling contracts so that they obviously will go to larger primes who have the capacity to deliver instead of to small businesses mm-hmm. who here in um, our local economy could do the work or able to do the work, but when they put it together in a uh, large, large uh, multiple award contract, uh, it eliminates um, small businesses from the mix there. Um, We've seen some new guidelines come out to help women-owned small businesses into the government contracting arena. So those are all positives for our businesses here in Hawaii. Uh, Thank you very much for that, Jane. Jane Sawyer, Director of the Hawaii District Office of the Small Business Administration, for this, this edition of Five Questions, which takes us to question number four. This might be more of an anecdotal than a uh, requesting of data or anything, Jane, but in your years with the Small Business Administration, has there ever been perhaps one client or perhaps a particular case that stands out in your mind that you were you know, witness to or involved with that helped a small business literally from the beginning and then perhaps to a successful uh continuation of their story? Oh, it will take longer than 15 minutes for me to give you some of those, because uh, that is one of the, uh, I guess, rewards of being, you know, working with the SBA, because it's made a difference in um, so many people's lives, whether it is the business owner or um, their employees, by helping them stay in business or expand their business. Um, You know, we've, I've seen Small companies with uh, bright young entrepreneurs come in and they manage to get a startup loan um, from SBA or some working capital. It may have been at a critical time in their their business life where they may have gotten a $50,000 working capital loan that because they're a newer business, they couldn't have gotten um, one such case is Darren Kimura of Selpagy, um, his first company. We gave them some working capital and, you know, saw value in what he's doing. And uh, Darren is one of our leading entrepreneurs in the state years mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. Um, we've worked with a, a lot of companies in helping them 
you know, break into um, the government contracting arena, whether it's been um, construction, engineering, um, IT areas where we've worked with them um, at representing them to the government, gotten them jobs, gotten them bonding, and they've gone on to grow much bigger businesses and, uh, you know, even be, you know, uh, uh, leaders in the Pacific arena. Mm. Uh, another case would be um, Ace Auto Glass has worked with SBA, and, and they're one of our serial entrepreneurs where, you know, they've seen the value in um, owning their own um, facilities. And uh, right now, they're the largest auto glass supplier in in the whole Pacific arena um, with uh, offices or shops on all the islands and even in Guam, and they have used our 504 program to purchase their uh, shops uh, in different locations, renovate, rebuild, um, and uh, so mm. as they've expanded, they'll come back to the SBA because our 504 program, our fixed asset long-term financing, is really an excellent financing tool. It's flexible. It's a low down payment for the borrower. Uh, it's just an excellent program, and it works with all our banks and, uh, through HEDCO. So there's some just some great programs. I think there are a lot of myths about working with SBA, sure. taking hours and hours, uh, too much red tape, too much delay. But for a smart small business owner who knows understands our tools and can uh, work with their banker and perhaps a consultant or a trainer um, with our business development center or store, uh, the process uh, is the right thing to do on their path to success. Well, thank you for sharing those stories. I, I, I always find it valuable to hear those particular instances kind of personalize it so we mm -hmm. can get a little bit more of a, a connection with it. So. Thank you for that, Jane. After our fifth question, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind some of the contact information, but in the limited time that we have left, is there any way that you can share maybe one, two specific tips, perhaps even advice, that small business small businesses can focus on to improve their efforts? Um, I think the one thing that small businesses really need to know is that it's really important for them to kind of stay on top of what's going on in the economy, what's going on, as you mentioned, locally in the state legislature that affects their business. Um, you, you know, you're, you may be the, the key decision maker, you may be calling the shots, but you're not isolated in that you're providing products and services in your community. So things that are happening down the street at the big square building all affect how you do business. So businesses need to stay they uh, tune what's going on. They need to network and get information. And I think oftentimes people feel like, okay, I've been running this business for a while, and I don't need to look for any help or advice. You know, two heads are better than one. Um, I recommend that, you know, people do an annual checkup. If it's not just talking with your accountant, um, it may be going to see one of the talented business consultants that have, that's available at our small business development centers, at the mm -hmm. Minority um, Economic uh, Business Center, uh, up at UH, at PACE, at the Family Business Center, because there may be one or two ideas that you're just not picking up on, or maybe you just haven't heard. There's always something out there to help you manage your business better, to be more productive, and importantly, be more profitable. Excellent points. Uh, Jane Sawyer, our guest, uh, Director of the Hawaii District Office of the Small Business Administration. Jane, you have a website address that we can uh, visit you at? Sure. It's uh, sba.gov is probably the best place to go. Lots of tools, lots of information, explanations about our program, interactive training. If you can't get out of the, the office or out of your shop, great place to go and, and pick up some tips on running your business, sba.gov. Jane, it's been a pleasure today. I hope that we can visit again sometime soon. And uh, continued best of luck to you and yours. Thanks so very much for today. Well, thank you, Rick. Take Look forward care. to you again. Thank you much. Aloha to you. All right. Aloha. Bye now. Bye.